Hey guys, and welcome back to another very exciting quick Photoshop tutorial where I want to show you some really cool stuff that you can do with the program without boring you for a full 30 minutes. Now, I use Photoshop all the time for my photo editing work as well as for tasks such as creating YouTube thumbnails and there's a ton of awesome features in there that are absolutely worth knowing. However, to keep things short, in this tutorial I want to focus on my personal top 5 Photoshop features that I think you really should know and then show you how to actually use them. There will be timestamps down below so you can jump to anywhere in this video that you might find interesting. But now before I waffle on forever, let's jump right into the tutorial. One of my favorite tools in Photoshop is Content Aware Fill, an almost foolproof way to remove, well, almost anything from your images with the power of AI. Simply select the area of the layer that you want to erase and then come into Edit Content Aware Fill. A new preview panel and some settings will pop up on the right side and on the left you will see your original image, your selection, as well as a green sampling area overlay. The sampling area overlay tells Photoshop which areas of the image to use as the source for the pixels to use to fill in your selected area. You can erase the sampling area simply by clicking and drawing over it. You can expand the area if you hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard and then click and draw. And as you change this sampling area, the preview on the right will refresh to show you what the final result will look like. You can also play with the content aware fill parameters to the right. And once this looks good to you, simply click OK and Photoshop will create a new layer in your project that contains a patch layer that will fill in the area that you had selected. And it's that easy. When using Content Aware Fill, make sure you have the layer selected that contains the pixels that you want to remove. Also, you may have to help the AI along at times and add or remove what makes sense from the automatically generated sampling area. Just a quick tip, when removing larger objects, I often find it useful to remove them in parts and if you do need Content Aware Fill to respect some of the other patches that you have already created, simply make sure that you enable the Sample All Layers option. Nice, all cleaned up. What's next? Wouldn't it be nice if you were able to hide selected parts of a layer in a reversible and flexible way? Well, that's what layer masks do. Let's add an image of a cat, just cause cats just make everything better. Right now, we can't erase anything from this layer because it was brought in as a smart object, and more on those later. So let's rasterize it to actual pixels. Now you can select, cut and erase any parts of this layer in any way that you wish. However, if you accidentally deleted or erased too much, there's no easy way to bring that back since we actually deleted the pixels from the layer. Our only weapon really is to hit Ctrl or Command and Z to undo our destructive actions. Now, here's a better way to do this. With the layer selected, click on this little black sun in a white square at the bottom of your layer window to add a layer mask. Here's the new layer mask that is now attached to this layer and if you view it by clicking on it while holding down the Alt or Option key on your keyboard, you can see that this layer mask is completely white. Wherever a layer mask is white, the layer it is attached to will be fully opaque. Wherever the layer mask is black, the layer will be fully transparent. And the grays are all the in-betweens. Do make sure that the layer mask of the layer is selected and has this little outline. Then grab a brush and simply paint to essentially paint on the visibility for this layer. The great thing with this approach is that we can bring back any parts of this layer at any point in time simply by painting white back onto the layer mask or remove it again by painting the layer mask black. It's fully reversible and much more flexible than actually erasing the pixels of your layer. And we'll see the power of layer masks, especially when combined with adjustment layers, which we'll talk about next. There, sleeping cat. Next, let's talk about adjustment layers. An adjustment layer in Photoshop is a layer that contains a certain effect, usually a brightness or color adjustment, and that effect will be applied to all of the layers that sit below it. To create an adjustment layer, at the bottom of the layer panel, click on the black and white half and half pizza icon here and then select the adjustment layer that you want to create. I'm going with the curves effect because that's just the way I roll. This will add a new adjustment layer and this adjustment layer already has a layer mask added to it because the influence of this effect is meant to be controlled and painted on by you in any way that you may roll. With the adjustment layer selected, you can now tweak the effect parameters to affect the look and feel of all of the layers that sit below it in your project. And with the layer mask selected, you can now paint on this to define where and how strongly this adjustment layers and with it all of the effects that are on it are applied to your image. If you don't want to affect a particular layer, simply make sure that the adjustment layer sits below it so that the effect from the adjustment layer will no longer be applied. Also, if you want to apply an adjustment layer to a selected group of layers, simply create a new group, 
drop all of the relevant layers into that group and make sure that the adjustment layer sits at the top of the group. Then change the blend mode of this group to anything other than pass through and the adjustment layer will now only be applied to the layers within that group. Remember when I said we'll get back to smart objects? Well, let's do that right now. When you apply an effect in Photoshop to a rasterized image layer, such as a crystallize effect, the effect will be baked into the pixels of that layer and you can't adjust or remove the effect further down the line. A better way to do this is to right click on the layer in your layer panel and select to convert to smart object to wrap this layer in a container that will preserve its content as you mess around with it. There's now an icon on the layer to indicate that it's a smart object and if you now come up and apply one of the filters within Photoshop to this layer, this will be applied as a smart filter on the smart object. The great thing is that you can now toggle the effect on or off and you can adjust the effect parameters at any point in time. Smart indeed. Finally, let's talk about a feature that I only found out about recently but that has made my life a whole lot easier. Locking transparent pixels on a layer. Let me right click the layer mask that we created to isolate the cat and select to apply layer mask to bake this into the layer. Note that now all of the pixels around the cat on this layer are actually transparent. Let's say I want to paint just the edges of this cat to give them a bit of color from the lights all around my desk as if that light was casting on the cat. If I select the color of one of the lights, grab the brush tool and start painting, the paint will go all over the cat and all over the layer. However, if you come to the top of your layer panel and enable this little checkerboard toggle here to lock transparent pixels, paint now, the brush tool will respect the transparency of this layer and you can now only paint over elements that actually already exist. Now I'm going to change my blend mode a little bit and paint some red and blue light on my cat to make it sleep a little bit nicer on the desk. Let's paint a quick shadow underneath it as well. And yes, there's other ways to do this like creating groups that share layer masks, but let's just roll with this. And there you go. My personal top five Photoshop features for making the perfect cat bed. Or, you know, a thumbnail image. Do let me know what your personal favorite Photoshop tools are down in the comment section below. And that is all there is to it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and please don't forget to like and subscribe if you would like to see more. All and any useful links you will find in the video description and please leave any comments, questions or suggestions down below. And with that, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.